Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, we're going to show you an alternative method to, instead of, say, going through all the hassle with a CMU wall or cinder block or concrete block or even brick wall, if you want to stucco it, there's 25 different ways to do that. And keep in mind, too, there's a reason why uh, a lot of us plasters are kind of thin. You take my skinny arse and... Uh, you bend down a lot, guys, you can just rip your pants. So you better be on the ball and slim if you're going to be doing this for a living. Today, we're going to do something different. We're going to stucco a wall, and the camera may show what's in back of this 3.8 high rib lath. We've got 4x4 four four sunk in the ground, and then we cross members. And why are we doing it with this? Because this fella is a friend of mine. And he says, well, Kirk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig down two feet. I'm going to set CMU blocks, cinder block, concrete blocks, all mean the same thing. We're going to set it here. We're going to rebar it. We're going to fill it with concrete. And I thought, <laughs> why? And he says, well, we want a structurally strong wall. And I said, why? Uh, I mean, it sounds to me like you're trying to build a Vatican wall. I mean, why not go 40 feet high like a telephone pole like theirs? Anyway, he says, well, you got a better way to do it? I said, I got 50 ways to do it if you want to save some time and money and effort. Uh, he says, what would you recommend? I said, well, stick some 4x4s four in it, pressure treated. Go down two feet, and I'll do it for you for nothing, man. You're my buddy. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, what I found myself, this is the second take because I was whispering and Jay says, yeah, why are you whispering? We got eight hives over here. They're beehives. And we were here earlier and they got steered up. And he says, dude, they're swarming. You got to leave. And I said, man, once we got mud going, we can't leave. I can't throw away a whole wheelbarrow or a whole mixer full of mud. So we're trying to be cautious and not piss these bees off. Um, anyway, I have my guy, he's gonna come here and load these boards up gently. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and uh, skim these walls. At first, we're gonna match the color of the block. And he says, well, we can't do that. We're gonna do something else. I said, oh, I'll tell you what, once we skim coat this, we could put lines in it to match the block or we can match pyramid blocks, like put three lines and then come vertically every other line and make it look like pyramids. And finally, he says, Kirk, what we want to do is we want to paint a mural on it. And I said, OK, if you want to do that, what we'll do is we'll skim it. We'll float it, hard rubber float. Then we'll steel trowel it. Now, generally, guys, as a rule, if you steel trowel plaster, you're going to get some hairline cracking. But on this, just like cinder block, brick, um, it's unlikely to get hairline cracking. And even if it cracks, that's not a big deal. I tell most folks, even if it cracks, all you have to do is put a little caulking in it or buy a quality paint like Sherwin-Williams. It'll flood the cracks. Cracking is not a big deal, guys. It is a simple, minor thing to repair with good quality paints. Okay, guys, I'll show you some of the, something else, too. Uh, you, you can save a lot of money, by the way, to do it this way. But if you, the idea is to press just right. And when I say press just right, notice there's not a lot dropping. Here's, and this is good mud. It's uh, perfect mud for this. Again, notice there's not a whole lot of mud dropping. So I'm not wasting a lot. Why? Because I know how to, to mix. Well, Jason... We got a good mix here. Here's, if, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll do this. And you see a lot of that mud dropping. You'll push too much pressure and it drops down. Right now I got a very rich mix because if it's rich, I won't lose too much. What's happening behind here, it's keying. So it's mushrooming in back of that. And what we're gonna do, because it's two fences, when we're done, we're gonna go behind and trow that keying down. Anyway, that's, that is what we are doing, guys. So I'm going to get back to it because uh, we got a lot of stuff to do here. And we're trying not to piss off them bees. 
And again, keep in mind, this is just an alternative way. It's an alternative way, guys, to make a structurally sound wall at a much cheaper cost and labor intensive uh, than using the CMU uh, blocks. Okay, guys, we are continuing with our adventure. The camera is being, uh, well, we're stopping and going because when the bees get pissed off, that's their way of saying, I ain't happy. If they ain't happy, we ain't happy. Uh, we just had a big swarm. And I just keep recalling what the homeowner said, <laughs> that he was up in a tree shaking a queen bee out and he got stung 120 times. That's what they pulled out of him. Uh, so I know there's a bee friendly guy who watches our video and a couple other bee guys They'll probably be the only ones who are thinking, hey, I know what he's talking about. With me, I'm not, I'm not too worried about them. I have, uh, <laughs> I know when to stop and when to start. But anyway, again, the whole theme of this was to show you a different way that you could stucco a fence, a wall, anything, and save a little bit of money. Uh, save a lot of money actually because uh, the CMU that gets expensive and it's very hard labor for most people because CMU is not very light <laughs> it's cinder blocks anyhow as we keep moving uh, Jay's gonna help me we're gonna bottom up and give these guys a chance to relax over here because I see them start to swarm again we pick a great day for this. We need a cold, rainy day, but uh, we improvise. Uh, that's why if I, he said, listen, if you hear them swarming, and I thought, this ears doesn't hear well, but I could hear them. So we're gonna turn that camera off and we're gonna try to scratch, scratch this whole thing and possibly brown it and then show you how we float it and steel trowel it. All right, guys, what I'm doing is we're putting our second coat on and Fat and ugly, guys. Fat and ugly. That means um, I'm going to Darby this anyhow. And so if I have excess mud on here, that's good. Because I don't want it thin. So I just always like to put it on fat and ugly. What's that, Tim? Like my brother Lou. Stop it. All right, fat and ugly around the bees. We don't want to piss these bees off again. Fat and ugly. I'll show you why after I put two more of these guys on right here. One, one more. Fat and ugly. And we gotta stretch. Stretch it. Oh, fat and ugly. A little too high for me. Come on. Ooh. Stretch it. Stretch it. Stretch. One more. Blam. I'm gonna move this part with the Darby. I'm just putting this excess mud where I, I could use it. All right, Darby time. We always wet the Darby, wet enough. Okay, we're gonna take this mud here, and move it around. You gotta stretch for that top. On my tiptoes, stretch for it. Oh my, tiptoe. Okay. Now we just straighten this middle section out. That gives you a pretty full wall. By the time this is set, you got a lot of strength going on here. It would happen to be about 100 today. And so what we do is we wet the walls prior. What you guys aren't seeing is me missing these walls over and over and over because 
I don't want it to set. All right, guys, different day. We took a little break. Uh, the bee said, hey, Kirk, I give you honey for your tea, but don't get too near us. Anyway, we had a, I was initially just going to um, do a steel trial finish, but he was doing a, a mural here, and we left for a short period so that we didn't get stung. And now we're back a different day. And since I had a few joints in here, stucco waits for no man, and it doesn't wait for bees either. So when we left, we left a few holidays here and there, nothing we can't handle. So what we're doing now is I'm just putting another finish on top of this finish because what we want to do is give it a somewhat smooth finish. I wanted to do the steel trowel finish for the mural. I mean, now, now granted guys, this is going to get painted anyway. So if it's going to get painted anyway, it doesn't matter. Imperfections, they, they don't really matter. So what we're doing is I'm using a, it's called a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish, but every, every company has their own mix and the mix is generally 30 by 30. It's, that's the call the sand. This, it's the finest sand you can get with stucco. And be aware too guys, this is not interior tape and mud we're working with. Uh, interior tape and mud doesn't have any sand in it so you can get tight and you, you can go almost like glass if you're good enough. But here we're not, we're not worried about um, making it too, too glass-like. And you could only trowel down sand so much, guys, because there's aggregate in it. Anybody says, oh, I can, right here, this is smooth enough for a mural. If I want to go another coat, I can make it even a lot more smoother. But uh, it's not necessary. So we're continuing with what we're doing. And I'll tell you guys, for, for just troweling it on and troweling it off, like I'll go up and then I'll come back down on my joint. Like, see that? It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, I know a lot of folks, they watch what we do and they say, oh gee, you're not a real plaster because you're using the wrong trowel. I'll tell you guys, any trowel that floats your boat, use it. It doesn't matter if it's a tiny trial, big trial, a pull trial. If, it's, if it makes you happy, use it. It's, uh, usually when guys say that, I'll say, man, what, what kind of comment is that? That's like plaster envy. Uh, I use the trial I want to use. Anyhow, you see where we're going with this? You go up and come on down. And if you got a holiday, you just go right over it. Holiday is just a term for painting. If you miss a spot, they call it a holiday. You see that? And that's a, a hard steel trowel finish, guys. Take it out, put on your hawk. Now, generally, we're starting, uh, and this dirt's going to come up to here. I went high, and the fellow said, Kirk, you don't need to go that high. I thought, well, just for the sake of being extra cautious, how about I take it a little higher? That way, when everything is, is said and done, I'd rather be nothing showing on the bottom than a big gap. And again, he's going to go ahead and put a mirror on this. So, you guys have seen how this works there's many ways to skin a cat guys and that just means if you want to do a cinder block wall you can do that if you want to do stucco on both sides of a wall you can do that there's a thousand different ways to accomplish the same thing uh, his idea was uh, again with the 
Cinder block, man, that was a lot of work. Fortunately, he has me as a neighbor, so I can come over here and do this for him. Anyhow, guys, we thank you for watching. I'm going to finish this up. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.